Dustborn continues to push some card prices in the secondary market, and the Commander Ban List update has caused a well-known card to take off. This video is sponsored by Flipside Gaming. Check out FlipsideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Right now you can pre-order Dustborn House of Horror, or find a vast number of other great products on their website. Remember, shipping is free in the US if your order is over $100 or consists only of singles. Just look in the description or comment section below for direct links to their site. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. Overall, the market is still calm this week as many players wait to see how Dustmourne's release will impact card prices and gameplay in various formats. However, there's still some interesting cards in our top 10 this week that are moving up, and wait till you see our number one card. As always, we look at two pieces of criteria when we come up with our top 10 list. We want to see a percentage increase in the value of the cards, of course, but we also want to see a true increase in the number of sales from week to week as well. Quickly before we get into it though, just a couple fast things. I do want to say thank you to two viewers who gave Super Thanks tips last week, Remy333 and Todd Branch. Thank you both for your Super Thanks tips and for your support. Couldn't do this without viewers like yourself. I truly appreciate that. It helps the channel more than I can even say. And I also want to say thank you to one of our Hero and Legend tier channel members, that is Obscure Gaming. Obscure Gaming, thank you for being a channel member. Your support through that avenue really does go a long way as well. So thank you again, and now, without any further ado, let's get into it. Prior to looking at number 10, I do want to give a little context as to something major that's going on this week, and that was an update that occurred to the Commander ban list yesterday. In case you haven't heard, these four cards are now banned in the format. Dockside Extortionist, Nadu Winged Wisdom, Jeweled Lotus, and Mana Crypt. Obviously, the value of these four cards are going to be trending down in the coming days and weeks, especially Jeweled Lotus. I mean, there's nothing you can really do with that card now. But others are going to be spiking to fill the void that they will be leaving. More on that later. Beyond the financial aspect of this, though, I do want to take a moment to say that I truly do feel for the players that have been impacted by this banning. Many have spent a lot of hard-earned money on copies of these four cards over the years, and I did receive at least one message from a viewer who said that they were going to be leaving Magic after recently picking up some of these cards. I also know that even since the announcement, I've lost subscribers, even a channel member, so I know there's people that are ducking out because of this. Anyway, I just wanted to give that perspective before we got into our number 10 card, which is... Sulfim Mayhem Dominus. This is up 217 this week to 1268, that's a 21% increase. This has been a fairly popular commander and in the 99 of several builds there, like Nakusar the Mind Razor, for example. But now Dustborn is making Solfim jump. Many players are getting this to upgrade the Endless Punishment commander deck, while others are planning on adding it to fresh builds around a couple of cards from there. The front-facing commander, Valgavoth, Harrower of Souls, and the Lord of Pain. Solfim Mayhem Dominus will be a great way to push the speed of Endless Punishment's Death by a Thousand Cuts strategy. Number 9 is Second Chance. Of 281 this week to 879, that's a 46% increase. This reserveless card was number 8 on the hot list last week, and it really has not been seeing much play to speak of. However, many think that Dustmourne will change all that. Second Chance could be a good upgrade to the Enchantment Centric Miracle Worker Commander deck, and it could also be good in fresh builds around the front facing commander, Aminatu Valpiercer. But building around another card from that pre con could truly unlock Second Chance's potential. And that card is the Master of Keys. Giving Second Chance Escape means you will be able to get it back from the graveyard, although it may be helpful to have something like Necropotence or Necrodominance to keep your life total where you need it. The question remains though, is this too many hoops to jump through? Time will tell, but right now Second Chance remains hot. He's the best guy around. Our number 8 card is Arabo, Roar of the World, up 310 to $17, that's a 22% increase. This is the foil copy found in the Commander 2017 Feline Ferocity deck. As you know, Arabo is a very popular commander for the cat creature type, but you also see this in Ren and Siri and separable builds in the format. Ultimately, this card has been dry online since it has only been reprinted one time, and that was when it was part of one of the original secret layers, OMG Kitties. Perhaps some of the recent interest in Arabo is tied into one of the playtest cards from Mystery Booster 2. The card I'm referring to is Ren and Siri Inseparable. -er. Technically, this card isn't Commander Legal, but some playgroups do allow playtests or Silver Border cards, so it may put just a little stress on Arabo's inventory. 
Coming in at number seven is Selective Memory, up 378 to 479. That's a 374% increase. This one print wonder is jumping now due to its role in a new version of Modern Mono Blue Char Belcher that some are calling Selective Oracle. It runs four copies of Selective Memory, and it does have a copy of Thassa's Oracle as well as Jace Wielder and Mysteries as additional win conditions. Basically, the deck has no regular lands, only double-sided cards that let you choose to play the land side or the spell side. This is good for Char Belcher, but you can also use Selective Memory to exile your whole deck except for Thassa's Oracle, if it isn't already in your hand, and then play it to win the game, or you can attempt to draw from an empty deck with Jace and win that way. It is also cool to see a couple copies of Propaganda in the sideboard, which became modern legal with the release of MTG Universes Beyond Assassin's Creed. Anyway, the deck has been performing well. I have seen at 5.0 several MTGO Modern Leagues, and many content creators have been featuring the build like Andrea Mangucci, for example. We'll have to see how the modern meta adjusts to handle Selective Oracle, but right now, the already scarce Selective Memory has become even harder to find. Number 6, Barrel Goyf up 388 to $15. That's a 35% increase. This is from the Modern Horizons 3 Graveyard Overdrive Commander deck. As you would imagine, it is in fresh builds around a couple cards from its pre-con, including the front-facing commander Disa the Restless and Corum the Undertaker, but it's in other builds there too, like Phoenix God of Deception. Plus, remember, there is support for the Delirium Mechanic in Dustmourne, and that support has put some eyes on this card. Filling your graveyard is exactly what you want to do with Goyfs like this one, and Barrel Goyf can even help you populate the graveyard, which pushes the Delirium strategy. I have seen some grabbing this to upgrade the Dustmourne Death Toll Commander deck. Others are planning on adding it to fresh builds around the front-facing commander from there, Winter Cynical Opportunist. And I've seen Barrow Goyf and decklists around Winter Mythanthropic Guide from the main set. There is more to the story though, Barrow Goyf is also showing up in some legacy decks in this post-grief meta. Two or three copies are found in the sideboards of Reanimator and Doomsday, plus you often see a copy of it in the main of Maverick. Overall though, Commander is the key driver for the price jump this week. Quickly before we get to our top 5, just a fast reminder, this video is sponsored by Flipside Gaming. Check out FlipsideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Right now you can pre-order Dustmore and House of Horror products there. You can also pick up a ton of other products from different MTG sets. You can even pre-order Foundations now on their website. Remember, if your order is over $100 or consists only of singles, shipping will be free in the United States. And if you're looking for a direct link to their site, just check out the description or the comment section below. I do have links posted in both of those places. And now, without any further ado, let's get to the top five. Coming in at number five is Chandra Awakened Inferno. The Commander Masters copy is up 333 to 533. That is a 167% increase. The Core Set 2020 copy up 472 to 697. That's a 210% increase. This is found in Pioneer Naya Midrange, and sometimes in Boros Midrange there, but the real story here is Commander. Currently, Chandra Awakened Inferno gets some Commander play in a few different builds. The most popular one is Commodore Guff, but this is another card that is getting pushed because of Dustmourne. Many Commander players wanted to upgrade the Endless Punishment deck, and still others are planning on adding this Chandra to fresh builds around a couple cards from there. Again, they are Valgavoth, Harrower of Souls, and the Lord of Pain. Chandra Awaken Inferno's emblem will be a great way to activate Valgavoth for sure. Number 4 is Pyrogoyf of 669 to 867. That's a 338% increase. This is another card from the Modern Horizons 3 Graveyard Overdrive Commander deck, and you do see it in fresh builds around Disa the Restless from there. I did say earlier that Dustmourne has brought support for Delirium, but that is actually not the reason we're seeing this Goyf jump. Pyrogoyf is spiking because of its role in a legacy deck that is performing well in this post-grief meta, and that deck is Mono Red Initiative. There, Pyrogoyf combos with Fable of the Mirror Breaker to copy itself and do big damage. We'll have to see how the legacy meta evolves, but right now Pyrogoyf is on fire. Coming in at number 3 is Omnixilus Captive Kingpin up 1398 to 1670. That is a 514% increase if you're doing the math at home. This card from the ill-fated March of the Machine, the Aftermath set, has been a fairly popular commander, and it even got a bump in play recently since you do see it as part of the 99 sometimes in Gev Scout Scorch builds. Gev is a card from Bloomboro. But as you know, there's a good amount of demon support in Dustmourne, and Omnixilus Captive Kingpin will be a great upgrade to the Endless Punishment Commander deck. 
Plus, I am seeing a lot of people putting it in their deck list for fresh builds around Valgavoth, Harrower of Souls from there. Omnixilis and Valgavoth will play very well with our number 2 card, which you're going to see shortly. Anyway, that extra attention, combined with the fact that Omnixilis came from an unpopular set, has led to an aggressive spike this week. Number 2 is Forsaken Wastes. It goes up 1938 to 3936. That is a 97% increase. The Mirage copy is the only tournament legal printing of this reserve list card, and it has become highly sought after because of Dustmourne. Players wanted to upgrade the upcoming Endless Punishment Commander deck, or they want to put it in fresh builds around Valgavoth, Harrower of Souls from there. Forsaken Wastes is another great way to trigger Valgavoth on each of your opponent's upkeeps, and since it's already a hard to find reserve list card, it continues to experience a big spike. And finally, coming in at number one is Mana Vault. The fourth edition copy is a 45.96 to 99.99. That's an 85% increase. The revised copy of $50.07 to $105. That's a 91% increase. The Double Masters 2022 copy goes up $60.37 to $125. That's a 93% increase. Ultimate Masters up $75.92 to $147.89. 105% increase. And that 5th edition copy up $134.90 to $192.73. That's a 233% increase. Wow, okay, so let me say this first. As for alpha, beta, and unlimited copies, there's not enough early sales data to see how they are responding, but those versions are already quite high. Remains to be seen if they're going to change that much. Other premium versions of this card, though, like foils, are currently heating up as well. So what's going on here? This is restricted in Vintage, and it does see a good amount of play there. The most popular deck running it is Jewel Shops, but it's in other builds too, like Paradoxical Outcome, 8-Cast, Oops All Spells, and sometimes Prison Shops. However, Commander is the format causing this spike. As you know, Mana Vault sees a good amount of Commander play in various builds. One of the more popular ones is Zuladag Void Gorger, for example, but I buried the lead long enough. Remember way back at the start of this video when I was discussing the Bands List update for Commander? Well, it turns out when you ban fast mana artifacts like Jeweled Lotus and Mana Crypt, other fast mana artifacts are going to spike as players look for replacement options. Sellers responded to the bannings and to the vacuum left in many Commander decks by upping the price of Mana Crypt as demand quickly skyrocketed. I'm sure in the coming days we're going to see some other fast mana cards jumping as well, as players and speculators get their bearings and start to figure out which cards are going to see more play in the future. All right, just like that, that's going to do it for our top 10 hot cards of the week and what a week it was, but this is only part of the story. Tomorrow, we're going to come back and we're going to look at the top 10 cold cards. Will any of those four banned cards make it? Well, time will tell. Good chance we see one or two of them, though, I think. Until next time, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.